Hey, welcome to Let's Talk Context Live, episode 20. I'm Ethlyn, and let's get right into it. So, the Give the Gift of Language giveaway will begin tomorrow on Twitter. So if you're not following us on Twitter, be sure to go on Twitter and follow us because the giveaway will happen, the contest will happen, and you will get a chance to win two months of free English conversation lessons via Skype or Google or some other platform. But yes, so be on the lookout tomorrow on Twitter. Be sure to follow us so that you can find out about the giveaway to win two months of free English. Our new website is ready. Ah! Well, our new website launched about a week ago. And if you haven't seen it, you've got to go check it out because it is beautiful it's amazing it looks great it gives you a better idea of who we are and what we do and so www.speakrightplay.com the link will be in the description but go check it out and let us know what you think final announcement we have a blog our blog is ready and tomorrow the first blog article will be released now if you are an intermediate to advanced english student if you are thinking about beginning a career in English, becoming a translator, a transcriber, or if you just want to learn more about English, what you can do with it in general, then this blog is for you. We are catering it specifically to giving you tips on how to build your career if you're looking to start a career or how to expand your career if you're already a freelancer and you work in transcription or translation services so yeah if you're interested in what you can do with the english you're learning right now then the blog is for you rapidenglishfluency.com you can find it through speakrightplay.com or you can go to the website itself and the link will also be in the description be on the lookout tomorrow the blog article will be released I am so excited because our team has been working so hard on getting the content together for you. So let's go ahead and begin with Around the World. Today I want to talk about Beirut. And we're not going to get super political, I promise. I try so hard to keep this platform from talking heavily about politics. But I think there are important vocabulary terms, there are important topics to discuss. So that's why we're going to talk about it. So I was reading on NPR, an article by Larry Kaplow, Ruth Sherlock, and Nada Humsey um, about the huge blast. And you've probably heard about it already. There was a huge blast in Beirut on Tuesday. And it's crazy because there were like over 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate in a warehouse that just exploded. And I say it's crazy, I say it's insane, like it's nuts, because who stores almost 3,000 tons of ammonium nitrate in a warehouse for seven years? Like, where is the oversight and where is the accountability for something like that? Like, how does the government, how do the owners allow that very volatile, that explosive ingredient which is used in making bombs, by the way, to be stored and just sitting for seven years. Now, the NPR article, it does go into detail about when the, the ship that was carrying the ammonium nitrate arrived in Beirut, and it talks about how the, it was only supposed to pick up something in Beirut for a short period of time and then go on its way to Mozambique. That's where the ammonium nitrate was headed but there were some issues, there were complications. You can go ahead and read the NPR article to find out the details. But what I really wanted to get to was this whole idea of protesting because now what's happening in Beirut, people are protesting and they want to see an overhaul in the government. They want the government to change completely um, because this is, this is unacceptable. And so what do you think about that? I mean, should the government be changed because of this, this, this thing that happened, this negligent behavior that happened that cost over 100 people their lives and has left 
thousands wounded or hospitalized as well as the city's infrastructure, the city's buildings have been destroyed. Like half of the city has been destroyed. That's the report we're getting here in the US. And I just, I, you know, we saw it a few years ago with the Arab Spring. We saw it in Tunisia, in Egypt. We're seeing it now in the US with the Black Lives Matter protests. So when we talk about protests, when we think about protests, do you think that they are effective? Do you think that they work? That if people go into the streets and they're frustrated enough and they protest as if their life depended on it, that that will bring about change. I would love to have that conversation with you. And no matter your English level, let's just talk about it. So you can leave your thoughts in the comments or you can leave them later on after the video, after the live stream. But what are your thoughts about protests? Do they work? That's the question I'm posing to you. All right, let's move on from the politics. Our word of the day. So the Speak Right Play word of the day is a contest that we're doing. And from now, well, from earlier until, <laughs> until the end of September, there will be one word of the day for each live stream that we do on a Sunday. And what I'm asking you to do is to use your knowledge your pre-existing knowledge that you already know about this word, as well as what I'm going to explain in this video, write a sentence using the term. And if your sentence is, is, uh, is proper, if it's correct, if you use the term correctly, then you will be entered to potentially win $25 either cash or a $25 Amazon gift card. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about our word of the day, and it's fitting because the word of the day is protest. Now, this word can either be a noun or a verb, but we're gonna talk about protest as a noun. And a protest is the act of showing that you disapprove or object to something. So my sample sentence to you is, there are protests happening all over the world to speak out against corrupt government leaders. So a protest can take on many forms. It can be people sitting in somewhere chained together. It could be people going out into the street, chanting, holding cards, holding banners. So protests can look differently, but that's the whole idea. So go ahead, if you wanna be entered into the contest, write your sentence using the term protest as a noun, be sure not to use it as a verb, as a noun in the comments section. And if you do 10 of these word of the day sentences, then you will be entered to win one of two Amazon gift cards. Finally, let's talk about it. So I've, I've spoken to my clients, I've spoken to friends who are learning English, who are studying English, and they say, English is so difficult. It's so frustrating. In fact, I was talking to one of my friends, we speak Spanish together, and she says to me, English is so hard. In Spanish, this is how we say this. And, you know, in English, I have to think differently. So I want to talk about two of the hardest things that I've been told um, that people struggle with when it comes to en learning English. And the first one is learning vocabulary terms. And I totally, I totally understand, I totally get it. But I think that if you take the approach that you take when you are in your home country and you were learning English, you were learning your mother tongue when you were in school, then that will help you. If you apply it to learning English, that will help you tremendously. And what do I mean by that? When you are learning a new vocabulary word or when you're trying to build your lexicon, you're trying to build the, the amount of vocabulary words that you know, I would say think about quality over quantity. And it's not a matter of learning 50 words a week or 100 words a week. It's a matter of learning maybe five or seven words a week, one word a day, and really understanding what that word means and how it functions and how you can use it in your everyday life. Because if you understand what one word means, then most likely because of parts of speech, you know maybe what two or three other words mean. So really, if you take that approach, then that one word that you learned for that day, it amounts to maybe six or seven words that you learn 
um, because of it. And so you're really learning more if you take that approach. So my suggestion, and I know it's frustrating, it's hard, it requires a lot of time, but my suggestion is don't try to learn 50 words a week. Don't even try to learn 25 words a week. I would say at the max, try to learn two or three words a day and really understand how those words work and, func and function in sentences. Write sentences using the words. You can write simple sentences, com complicated, advanced sentences. It doesn't matter. But really try to find situations where these terms can be applicable, where you can apply them, and take it from there. The other thing that I hear is students are frustrated because the pronunciation is hard. And it's true. There are some English words like the word read, right? Depending on how it's used in a sentence, it can either be pronounced read or read. Now, with those situations, you just have to learn the context and when to pronounce read or read. But in general, when you're struggling with pronunciation, what I say to my students is, depending on your mother tongue, some words may always be a challenge. It's not to say that you can never pronounce them correctly. It's just some sounds, if they don't exist in your mother tongue, they will pose a problem for you when you are trying to learn English and sound more like a native speaker. So what I say to them is, especially like my Arabic speakers, my Russian speakers, and there's just certain languages that when those speakers are trying to pronounce English words, some sounds are just, they're challenging. And so what I say is find an accent, an American accent that you are trying to mimic that's the easiest for you because not all Americans sound the same. My accent is probably more Northern, Northeastern, um, because I grew up in the Northeast, but I also code switch. And so the other languages that I speak influence how I speak English. But my point is find an accent that is easy for you to imitate. My Chinese speakers, um, and my, my Korean speakers, they tend to find the Southern, like the Midwestern accent easy. My Russian speakers, they tend to go with the New York accent, but find one that is easy for you to mimic, that you're comfortable with, and try to imitate the way they pronounce those words. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but, um, that, that would be a great pronunciation tool. And then if you are still struggling to pronounce these words correctly, get as close to it as you can and just recognize that it may not be 100% perfect. But native speakers, because we don't necessarily listen for every single sound, uh, when we speak and when we're trying to understand and have conversations with people, we take in all the information and process it. So even if you mess up on one little sound, it's not going to impact the overall conversation as a whole. You might get down on yourself about it, but a native speaker is not thinking, oh my gosh, she, sa he, she said protest instead of protest. Um, someone like me might um, may be aware of it, but they're not gonna like call you out in the middle of your conversation and say, you mispronounced the word, no. Um, so that's my suggestion. When you're trying to understand pronunciation, when you're trying to master your pronunciation, find those regions. First of all, pick a region with an accent that's easiest for you. I don't care if it sounds, you know, super country or people say whatever. Find one that's easiest for you to imitate and then take it from there. So I hope that helps. What we're gonna do, there are a bunch of other things that my friends and clients told me that's difficult about learning English. So we can continue uh, talking about this if it's something that interests you, or if you have something that you're like, I hate learning English because of this, let me know and we'll see if we can kind of address it or figure out a way to, to make it better so that you can love English again and it won't be so challenging. Be sure to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, at Speak Right Play, Facebook, Speak Right Play English, and Patreon, Speak Right Play. And um, I think I'm forgetting one, but it's okay. All the links to the, to the social platforms are below. The Give the Gift of Language uh, giveaway begins on Monday on Twitter tomorrow. So win two months of free English conversation lessons. I will see you next week. Bye.